Here, I'm gonna show you a robust way to track hours worked, and then to be able to perform calculations based off of that, such as how much someone is owed. And here, I'm gonna show you the system for doing that, what you see in front of you, but then lift the hood to explain how it works, so it'll be easy for you to do things like subtract lunch breaks or whatever other amount of time you need to, calculate overtime, things like that. And if you like this tutorial, make sure to give it a thumbs up, subscribe, and hit the bell icon. And check the links below this video for my full Excel courses that'll help you automate Excel even more, especially using VBA and macros. Now let's take a look at what we have here. The first thing you always need is one column for when you start and one column for when you finish. And you can include only the time if you want, but that's not going to create a very robust spreadsheet. So it's a better idea to include the full date and time for when the person clocked in and the full date and time for when they clocked out. And that's going to allow you to track when the user works more than one day. So it could be starting at night and finishing in the morning or working for more than 24 hours like we have right here. There are many examples where having the full date in there is just going to make your life so much easier. And the easy way to do that, let's keep our dates easy, 1-1-2022, one, one, is to input everything all at once. So you start at 8 a.m., so I'm going to go like that, then OO, and AM. And Excel is pretty darn good at guessing dates these days. So if I click this, I can look up here and see we have custom. If I'm so worried maybe it's not a date, I can right click the cell and go to format cells. And in the custom tab, we can see month, day, year, hours, and minutes. So Excel does see it as a date. There's one more way to verify that. And this is very important, by the way. You want to make sure it's seen correctly. Another way to verify it is to go up here and click general. And you're going to see crazy numbers like this, which I'm going to get to shortly in this tutorial. This means Excel sees it correctly. So let's hit control Z to back that up. And then for the next one, same thing, 2022. And how about, let's go for five, how about 15 PM. So we have a clock in and we have a clock out. So how do we get how much time has elapsed between the two? Well, we go like this equals the later date and time minus the earlier one. Enter. And then we're going to get a crazy number like this. Technically, this is how many days you have worked. And that's why this column says days worked. But that's not a really friendly number. So let's get a friendly number. I'm going to leave this here for reference, though, because we're going to talk about it in just a moment. So let's go here and paste that in there. And let me clear the formatting because that's what I want to show you. All right, so here's what we have in the cell. And we want to format it so that we can see how many hours were actually worked. Here I can see that they worked 8 hours and 45 minutes. Well, what do we do here? Right-click Format Cells, then go to Custom, and go down here to, there we go, the H with the bracket in it. And this format right here is going to work even if you go over 24 hours. So I can hit OK. And now we see the person worked for 9 hours and 15 minutes. But can we use this in a calculation to figure out how much to pay the person? Well, let's figure that out. Let's say that they are being paid $20 an hour. OK. And let's hit Enter. And we got 185 hours. Okay, let's change the format and see if that makes things better. So just how about a currency? $7.71. Hmm, that doesn't seem very helpful, does it? <laughs> no, because this is only the formatting. That's it. The formatting has been changed, but it is still just this number right here. So if I double click this, and I grab this and pull it over here to the decimal. Same thing. So what we now need to do is to get this or this into a number that we can actually use to perform business-based calculations. And this is where it's important to realize that these are the days worked, where one is one day. 
2 is 2 days, 3 and 3 days. And a decimal is simply a fraction of a day. So, how do we turn that into hours worked? Well, we times, we multiply this by 24. And then we get something that we can use to pay somebody. So we have 9.25 hours. Notice it's not 9.15. 15 minutes is a quarter of an hour, 25% of one hour. So we can use this in our calculations to get the right amount for whatever we need. Let's say over eight hours is overtime. Well, now we can use this guy to figure out how much overtime there is. So we can go like this and subtract eight from it and see there was, well, let's remove the formatting as well. We don't need currency formatting. 1.25 hours of overtime. So uh, this number you can use for display, but do not forget this number. And if you want to put all of this into one cell, which is what people are often going to do, then it would look something like this, or exactly like this. We take the clock out, we subtract the clock in, and we multiply it by 24. And then you have one nice, neat little cell that has everything in it. And as I mentioned, it's going to work for over 24 hours as well. So notice here, 8 a.m. on the 1st, 2 p.m. on the 2nd, 1.25 days worked, 30 hours, 30 hours. And now let me tell you a little bit more about how the dates work. I've alluded to this previously, earlier in this tutorial, and in my other date time tutorials I've talked about it, but let's select these guys and go up here to custom and remove the formatting. Lift the hood, pull back the curtain, take a look at the wizard. So this is how those dates and times were stored. These numbers on the left side of the decimal, one represents one day. Over here to the right, it's a fraction of a day. And that's how we get the time calculations. As each day, as each minute, as each second passes, this number will increase. And that's why we can subtract the clock in time from the clock out time, the finish time, because this will always be bigger. And that's going to tell us how much the person worked. So all that we're doing when we go from this all the way over here is getting these values in a format that's going to be either readable or just usable for what we need to calculate hours worked and then figure out how much to pay somebody. And that's why this here is a decimal because this is within the same day. It's less than 24 hours. And that's why I said days worked right here. So for this example, the person worked full on 24 hours. So this is one. They worked one day. When we format it in a nice way, it's 24. And when we get it so we can use it, it's 24 over here as well. But once you have this down, the very next thing is to ask, okay, but the person's going to go on lunch or they're going to have other 15 minute breaks here and there. How do I account for that? Well, first of all, you need to figure out how you want to track that because what some people do is they put columns in here for lunch start and lunch finish, and then they use that and subtract that time from this time. Once you understand it, it's not tricky, but learning it can be quite tricky. So how about what we do? Just show you that really, really quickly. All right, so let's say 1, 1, 2022. And how about lunch is at 11, 15 a.m. Okay, and I will copy that. And let's say it's a short lunch, 45. All right, so how do we subtract this from this? Let's do the two calculations separately. So equals of this minus this over here, okay, and equals uh, this minus this. I had two decimals, all right, so I can go like this for the bigger number, total worked minus 
lunch. And here we have that. And how many hours did they work? Well, you know how to take it into the nice display format and the hours worked format. Let's just go for the display format for now. There we go. Eight hours and 45 minutes. So some people do it like this. Some people track how many breaks the person's going to have because maybe it can be variable one per line. So the user start or the person starts, they finish, start, finish for a break, start, finish for a lunch, start, finish for a break, start work again, finish work again. Depending on your system, there are many different ways to track it, but you should now have the tools to be able to do that. And the last thing I want to leave you with is I've shown you how to work with everything once you've got all the dates. But let's say that you are going to go from 30 minutes or 30 hours or 30 seconds and you want to get that into the correct decimal format so that you can perform subtraction like we did here to subtract the lunch break. So the person gets 30 minutes for lunch regardless of if they take 30 minutes or not. So we are going to simply subtract 30 minutes from this. Well, how do we get 30 minutes into the decimal value? Well, it's quite simple. Equal how many minutes do we want equals 30 divided by 1,440 for the total number of minutes in a day. And that's going to give us the correct decimal value for 30 minutes. How do we do it for seconds? Well, it is the exact same thing. How many seconds do you want? 30. Then you divide it by the number of seconds in a day, 86,400. How about four hours? Same thing. Figure out the hours that you want to work with, divide it by 24. So these up here are all decimals that I've just formatted to look a little bit nicer. So that's the correct decimal value that you could then use in the calculations. And these were simply formatted with this format here so that they looked a little bit nicer. And with that, I hope that you've got the tools that you need to build yourself an hours worked calculation spreadsheet. And if you have any questions, make sure to leave them either here below the YouTube video, or it'll be easier to reply to you if you leave them in the forum on teachexcel.com. There you can upload a sample worksheet and it's a lot easier to follow replies and select the correct answer as well. In addition, if you want to learn more about how to automate Excel, make sure that you check out my full Excel courses and I've got links to those below this video. But for this tutorial, that's all there is.